If you're president of the United States, you can't just ride around in a regular car. Here at the Henry Ford, there's a collection that spans 80 years of presidential limousines. And some of the events that took place in these cars drastically changed the course of American history. Viewing this regal collection of presidential limousines feels like a walk through American history itself, reflecting pageantry and tragedy, war and peace. Matt Anderson is curator of transportation at the Henry Ford, and he showed me how these presidential vehicles have a special purpose beyond the obvious. A presidential limousine really has to play three roles in its uh, daily life. One, it has to have the formality of a, a limousine for state occasions, things like that. It has to provide visibility so the president can be seen by crowds and by the press, but it also has to supply the security of an army tank. The oldest vehicle in this collection was used by President Teddy Roosevelt. To call it a limousine might be a stretch because this ride is of the horse-drawn variety. Full disclosure, Teddy Roosevelt is my favorite president. And this is his carriage right here from 1902. Was this the first official presidential vehicle? I think it's fair to say that the presidential limo that we understand today starts right here. And would TR, as he was known, just hop out and shake hands and then get back in? No doubt, he'd probably jump out, shake a few hands. This looks like a presidential limousine. Yes, this car was customized for Franklin Roosevelt in 1939. Distant cousin of Teddy Roosevelt's. Yes, and this car is really where it all starts. It's the first automobile customized for presidential use. Nicknamed the Sunshine Special, this car was a reflection of FDR's outlook. Roosevelt always liked to ride with the top down so he could be more visible, but also because he was famously optimistic, even during the depths of the Great Depression. The bubble top was most associated with President Eisenhower, who used it for all of his eight years in office. There is indeed some sort of shield that folds up there, right? Yes, you might think it's some kind of a bullet screen. It, it actually protects from bugs of all things. So <laughs> that that right? gets to the whole dignity issue. You know, you can't have a face full of flies when you're the leader of the free world. This car may not be recognizable to you, but if you imagine it as a convertible, then President John F. Kennedy likely comes to mind. President Kennedy was killed while riding in this car through Dallas on November 22nd, 1963. This is a 1961 Lincoln Continental. Lincoln had a whole new design that year, very clean, very elegant, very modern. And of course, Kennedy projected that image of youth and, and modernity, so they were a great fit. This car will always symbolize something horrible. It, a, a national tragedy. It, absolutely right. President Kennedy's assassination was a major turning point in, in national history and certainly a turning point in the design of presidential limousines. This represents the break between the bubble top, which is just an open car with no armor of any sort, and the modern sort of tank on wheels. This car was completely rebuilt after the assassination, given armor plating, given bulletproof glass, bulletproof tires. By the 1970s, the world looked very different and presidential vehicles started to reflect those changes in earnest. This car is most well known for being the one used by President Ronald Reagan on the day of his assassination attempt in 1981. This limousine is, is totally different from any of the others we've talked about because this one was built from the ground up to be an armored car. These days, the limousines actually are destroyed shortly after they're retired from use, and that's partially to test how effective the armor is against improving weapons. So they blow up the cars as part of a test to make future cars even safer. Exactly, so this may very well be the last presidential limousine saved in a museum. One that will continue to tell stories for generations to come.